John and I were uh, reliving some, some old memories of uh, Richard Pryor-centric material, such as The Toy and Pryor's Place, the Saturday afternoon kids variety show. Yeah, I, I, I had never seen The Pryor's Place, you know? Um, yeah, it's like a Sid and Marty Croft puppet mixed in with like a urban street kid sort of show. Now, were there puppets in the in this thing? Yeah, they had like these because there were a lot like of Croft rat. shows that weren't puppets, but uh, yeah, they had like a little rat, like a sewer rat sort of puppet character, and this was like a a, a variety show centered around Richard Pryor, and there was always some sort of life lesson that the show concluded with, where they he gathers the kids around and he tells them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing. I'm thinking of the picture you're going to use for the podcast or Briar's Place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and then it seems <laughs> like... Listen, at the end of the show, like, like don't do coke, kids. Because <laughs> Briar surely did Because <laughs> I got my hair on fire and <laughs> had to run down the street. Yeah. And I had to make a movie about it. Jojo Dancer, your life is calling. <laughs> but... And then and Ray Parker Jr. does a theme song yeah, to with, it with the sleeves rolled up, the Jerry curl. Oh mustache. my god! Oh my god! And then oh, oh, let's get on over to Prize Place. Yeah, well, but then it seems like Richard Pryor was throughout the thing doing a lot of his characters in the show. He did like in that character Mudbone. He does. Well, he had like a there was like a gypsy fortune teller and yeah. sort of that homeless bum sort of character. The whole, the the guy with the saxophone hat with the, with the big ha- hat and the saxophone that he That's, actually did it in like the last movie he did with with Richard Pryor, which what was that called Another You or something like that with Gene Wilder. Yeah, with Gene. Did I say Richard you said Wilder? With Richard Pryor. I said with oh Gene Wilder. You've been doing rails like uh, Richard Pryor, have you? <laughs> maybe. Maybe we're, we've been preparing. We've been yeah. we've been into the role. Motherfucker, you need to get down to Pryor's place. Learn some lessons. <laughs> I know. Fuck you up. I know. I know. And it's, then Pat Morita was on it. Pat Morita, well, Karate Kid. And Pat Morita would do anything. The, Marlo the Gibbs. Point. Yes. Great stuff. Great stuff. I mean, and then the uh, the intro is just fantastic. We got the. Uh, the when did that? Playing, when was that on? It was the early '80s. It was like '85. I'd say '85, like '84 to like '86, somewhere in there. But I remember probably like around the time I was like in fourth grade, fifth grade, somewhere around that time. I remember watching that on Saturdays. I mean, I really did watch that like consistently yeah. for like you know a year or so. They used to come on and. I don't. I never remember it. I guess it's a little before my time, you know. I, you're not. I mean, I'm just a little well, slightly you had younger. Down to Pryor's place. I. I don't know. I'm slightly younger, and I, I, the toy for me was a seminal experience in my life because you know my parents. Uh, You've sub- never seen a, a, a wealthy aristocratic uh, young white man from a prominent family purchasing a black man. I don't know. Yeah, I mean my. The, the gist I, of the film, basically? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure it happens every once in a while. Wonder Wheel! <laughs> Wonder Wheel! No, Wonder Wheel! My God. I mean, I remember as a kid, in the early 80s, like, my parents, they subscribed to cable, because, you know, cable was really cheap at that point. They, they had, like, the Playboy channel and everything, you know, and they'd find me in the middle of the night, I'd be just watching the Playboy channel. And I'd, I, every time they, they left the room, I'd be watching the Playboy channel. I don't know why. I was just. Well, I was, so you was just didn't a know about kid. Pryor's place. You should have been <laughs> and, hanging out. You know, it was just like it just weird. It was like this joke because every time they left the room, I'd be watching the Playboy Channel, or I'd be watching like Showtime and Cinemax, and it seemed like they were playing the toy. It was, they were. It was on a loop. It was Swamp Thing, Poltergeist, and the toy. It seemed like the toy, the toy, the toy. And I was obsessed with the toy as a kid. And that that film like colored my experience, colored my view of race relations, and. Uh, a strange, you know, and, and when Wonder Wheel died, you know, because Richard Pryor plays this black journalist who has to work at a department store, and he gets, uh, you know, this little uh, young kid is is uh, you know picking out a present uh, at the toy store. Yeah, Wonder Wheel being an inflatable sort yeah. of one of those wheels that you see hamsters running around in, but yeah. a, but a, a life size yes. inflatable version, they, of course. Yes, with Richard Pryor inside of it. And he's like, I want him. I want him. And, he's, and he wants to. He, he wants, wants to purchase to, the black man. He wants to purchase the the black man, you know. And and uh, he wants to go to Pryor's place. He wants to go to Pryor. And and the thing in the movie is kind of like hanging out with Richard Pryor and the kid. You know, he's just like hanging out with him. And you know, he, he's dressing up and doing crazy things. He's got robots. J- Jerry Sandusky was a big fan of this. Film. I I guess so. I got it was just a weird so film. Hanging out with young boys. He's just like hanging out with with you know. And I mean, if you're a little kid, it's like. Like you're hanging out with uh, Richard Pryor. Yeah, in the Spider-Man pajamas. Yeah, Richard Pryor after he sold out. 
he sold out to the white to man. The man. To the, yeah, to the, well, let's be honest. Well, it's, to, it was to the man. This time, yeah, that was to the white man, really. The toy was 1982 in Pryor's Place. I think it was like 84, 85. So this was well into his selling out period. I think, I guess he had to supplement his, his uh, Coke habit. So he just was like showing up for like the opening of a hot dog stand if he had to, to get money to score some, some Coke. I, I don't, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think he had some problems, but I mean, I, I love, I love Richard Pryor. Let's, uh, let's, um, you know, open it with, I, I love him again. I, I think he's one of the greatest comedian he one of the greatest comedians ever really you know and uh i love and, his and emo phillips and, and yeah him and emo phillips and uh you know uh you know no prior's place was uh it was boss man yeah that was it was killer yeah and uh oh the other the other thing i remember uh that we were revisiting was a film i don't think you've you've seen the dirt bike kid with peter the, billingsley i i've seen the vhs of that because it's just a ridiculous the iconic red helmet of that peter billingsley is wearing you know the star of uh the the the, the christmas story right i don't know what oh, these Clark's films? the christmas story that, yes that annual film that that is shown <laughs> Yes. Every year around Christmas now, like they they loop it like on a marathon, Christmas Eve. Yes, but the the dirt bike kid is not a, an annual annually shown film. It's yeah, a Christmas story, of course. Yes. Yeah, so, but Billingsley. I mean, this was his big, uh, I guess, his big sophomore starring role after the Christmas Story. He was the the kid who apparently comes across some sort of magical dirt bike that has the ability to turn on his uh, DOS computer and. Like he, give him access to like the bank or something. Yeah, it's doing some scary stuff there, like like Videodrome and oh, like uh, Christine. I, yeah, I think so. And his dirt bike comes alive, and it and, apparently and it's it like Wally. It seems like it's going crazy. Like Wally, yeah. At Disney. Oh, it reminded well, me of him. I yeah, I I've never like, seen Wally, but I don't apparently, know. according to this film, you can be anywhere in the the metro like Los Angeles area. And as long as you hit an incline, you can fly like up in the clouds over the downtown LA area. Yeah, you get these these shots of Billingsley on the on the the dirt bike, and apparently, like the police in this film, according to the film, are like the most inept fucking people in the world, and they can't chase down a kid on a bicycle on a dirt bike. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know. Uh, They're doing all these tricks. Yeah, I don't know. It's no peanut butter solution. That's all I gotta say. But uh, yeah, brings me back to the Halcyon days of the early '80s and um, Nickelodeon. That type of stuff, type of junk, type of scene. What were some of the early Nickelodeon Marty Croft. type shows that? Yeah, they now were, that you mentioned that. My God, I mean, there was a lot of stuff. I mean, there was, of course, you can't do that on television. That was the big iconic show, the the Canadian import, which uh, you know had the launched the career of Alanis Morissette and a lot of uh, other. Is that the one where they're dumping obscure. the green slime on people? Yeah, the green slime, and then. You know, early in the, I mean, the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, Nickelodeon, if you remember, had a lot of weird, obscure stuff on it. You know, like they uh, would show all these short films, claymations. They were like really scary and weird stuff. And, and sh Turkey Television, I knew you here saw that. It was a kind of a late night kind of comedy program, which would show like music videos like Fish Heads and stuff like that, you know. And, uh, and then even the late night Disney Channel, if you remember back in the day, that was also kind of weird. They'd show all kinds of weird stuff in the Disney Channel. Like they showed 2001 A Space Odyssey, I think, one time in Disney Channel late at night. Weird, obscure stuff. Interesting. I, I just was a kid. I used to be an insomniac. I could just stay. I had so much energy as a little kid. I'd be, I'd be just staying up late at night and watching this stuff. So what were some of like the childhood shows that, that you grew upon? Uh, the Wizard that guy with the is that the midget? Yeah, with with the Rappaport. David David Rappaport. Rappaport yeah, not Michael. Not not Michael. Not Michael's much taller. And uh, that was a good show because it was always remote control. He was always doing something with remote control. And, I really remember uh, the Wizard faintly. Yeah, I mean like kids shows though. That that's kids I mean, shows. That was that was a uh, like prime time show, wasn't it? That it was, wasn't yeah, like a, yeah. But I mean, you know. And I guess there was always, you know, the Jim Henson stuff, the Storyteller. Fraggle the, Rock. Fraggle Rock. I remember the Storyteller. It was really kind of neat. It had that little animatronic uh, pet. And um, you know, it's 
But you missed Pryor's place. Miss Pryor's place. I mean, what was the what, what kind of okay? You were big in the Pryor's place because that's something you, you you fondly remember. What else do you, can you pick out during that time period? Eighty five, eighty six, eighty four. Around that time, there was a lot of. Uh, I actually grew up. Uh, th- this was a, a time where. Uh, with my parents being divorced, I got to spend like every other weekend with my father. And I remember we'd, sp- we'd spend like Saturday mornings, you know, having breakfast and I'd have on like cartoons and shows like Pryor's Place I'd watch. Yeah. But I, I used to watch uh, reruns of like the Wild Wild West, for instance, would come on like around 11 a.m. Uh, and I'd watch that. I kind of grew up on some of the reruns of, of shows like that. And then... Uh, one of them was The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. Oh, my God, Bob Ross. With the big, uh, you might know him with the the big afro, the big red afro, and he had that really soft, trance-like sort of way of talking to you, talking about painting, painting a little tree and make it your friend and little critters living in the trees. And he always painted these these paintings that looked like they would show up at like a Motel 6 of like like a forest or a mountain or a seascape that looked like they'd be at some seedy motel somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he was always talking about Burt Sienna. He was always Burt Sienna. You some Burt Sienna. Elizabeth Crimson, Thalu Blue. Yes. Burt Umber. Yeah, I mean, I Burt remember. Burt Umber. Burt Sienna. Burt Umber. I don't know what the hell Yeah, he, he always wore like the uh, the button-up, like light blue shirts with the blue jeans, the bell bottoms and all that. And Yeah, he was hip. Yeah, he was, uh, he, you just he know he fine. just got done smoking a fat one before he went out there on the stage. But that was like one of those public access uh, or public television rather shows. And he's been pretty much forgotten. You know, I, I think the new kids they don't even know that because they they really they don't play as any, they don't play him anymore. Well, he died like in I think the mid nineties. Yeah, he yeah, did he had, like cancer, and he 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 went tango uniform. Ah, uh, yeah. And um, some of the other shows I was trying to think of, um, Saturday Supercade, which was like, they took a lot of the Atari cartoon characters like Qbert and Space Ace and Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers, and they did like a, some cheesy animated type show. And then there was uh, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Roll Wrestling. I remember that. Hulk and, Hogan, man. And then they had uh, Mr. T, the Mr. T Power Hour, or whatever the hell it was called. It was, yeah. It was like an animated Mr. T. I remember that Mr. T was in a van, and he was going around saving people. Yeah, and he had this, like, uh, freckle-faced young little white boy sidekick that, like, thought he was, like, a, a white little tough urban kid like Mr. T was. And yeah. And it looked like uh, Ron Howard, like a young Ron Howard running around with Mr. T trying to act like he was he was all ghettified. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I remember that. I remember um, from uh, USA Network, Cartoon Express. I remember that. That was really cool. What was on that? Um, mainly, uh, it was just a collection of cartoons. It wasn't anything special. It was like uh, Scooby-Doo and uh, a lot of those kind of Hanna-Barbera type cartoons, I guess. Well, yeah, they had one that was... Um, what was the one that was like Blue Falcon and Wonder Dog or something? You remember that? I, uh, no, probably not. My memory, the memory um, escapes me. Well, then they had the uh, Sid Marty Croft. Like, uh, were, were they the ones that did like H.R. Puff and stuff? And yeah, and then later on they did stuff like Land of the Lost. Oh yeah, no, I grew up on that. Which is like the Kyoto Brothers, the guy, who did, the guys who did uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. They did all the the um, the dinosaurs hmm. with uh, what was it? Was it Timothy Bottoms? Wasn't he in that? Show? I, I, I just think so. remember the, uh, what do they call them? The, uh, the little horned, like, prehistoric type creatures that were in that that were always hissing all the time? I don't know. I don't know. Velociraptors? I don't know. No. <laughs> not, not Jurassic Park. No, it's not that. Okay, sorry. So they had uh, the, uh, the Amazing Spider Man and the Incredible Hulk. Those were cool. Ah. And you had uh, it, it was uh, Spider Man and his amazing friends. It had yes. uh, Firestar and Iceman with Spider Man. Ah, uh, they would fight crime together. Ah, uh, and then Pryor's Place would come. <laughs> and then Pryor's, <laughs> the real superhero. Yes, the, the man who would save the day. Well, it's, uh, some of the movies I remember. Um, I, we were talking about Heartbeats earlier. Yeah, because I did a show on Harbeeps. 
And uh, I remember my father actually took me to see that and the Dirt Bike Kid. And the Dirt Bike Kid. I remember seeing those at uh, Mm. the Greens Corner Theater in uh, Metro Atlanta, Georgia. The old Greens Corner Theater. It's probably there, but it's probably shit old now. But um, I saw a a lot of movies I saw there. I remember, uh, what is it, Space Raiders. That was a great movie. Space Raiders. Who was in that? It was like a knockoff of Star Wars. They took the ship from Battle Beyond the Stars. That looked like the big, looked like a big pair of hanging testicles. Yeah. Uh, kind of crossed with like the Enterprise from the Next Generation. That's yeah. what the ship looked like. And it was you never you never saw that. It had like Vince Edwards was in it, and they 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 had like the story where they picked up like this kid mm-hmm. who was like a stowaway, and they're these intergalactic bandits, and they're fighting against like the Galactic Empire, and it's it's a whole like Star Wars thing. But it's by mm. the same people that, that put together Battle Beyond the Stars. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they reuse those Battle Beyond the Stars uh, models so many times. It's gotten ridiculous at or some Space point. Hunter, you remember that? Yeah, Space, well, it's the 3D film, right? Or Maelstrom, the destruction of Jared Sin. Metal Storm, the, the destruction of Jared Sin. Yeah, the Richard Band, uh, or rather Charles Band uh, film with score by Richard Band. Yeah, that was a hit, actually, man. Metal Storm made a, made a pile of money. Uh, Space Hunter was just like one of these films that they like threw together because um, of the big 3D craze. Was it like Molly Ringwald? In there? Yeah, yeah, Molly Ringwald. Yeah, and and the the 3D was just utter crap. It just it just sucked. It it was actually technically in. It, they had all these problems with convergence, where basically it was like the the 3D imaging was like completely screwed up. It was like backwards. It was like you, you were seeing into his, I mean, you know, it's kind of crazy. It's like you got a hold of some bad shit at Pryor's place. It, yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. But then a little tiny film like Metal Storm, which was just made for nothing, went out and scored the heck of a lot of money because they, well, Charles Band had already done that other movie Parasite as well, 3D uh, with uh, Demi Moore. One of the ones I saw, uh, with my dad around this time too was uh, the, this is filed this under the uh, esoterica for like the childhood memories of ah. the shows and movies, but the um, Flash Gordon. Flash. He ah. saved my ass. Well, that so was a hell of a soundtrack. movie. Yes. Yeah, you had like uh, Timothy Dalton and Max von Sydow and uh, the the guy from Fiddler on the Roof, right? To Paul was that his name? Yes, yes, that was a uh, and and uh, Richard O'Brien from uh, from Rocky Horror. Which one was he? I was trying to remember in that. He what? was I don't know. He was the guy. He was Richard O'Brien. I don't know. He looks. He just looks he like Riff Raff. Yeah, he was Riff Raff. Sorry, he was Riff Raff in this too. I was trying. Yeah, I was trying to think about what his character was in Flash Gordon, but um, yeah, he's just the same. Same. Was he the one that played Clytus, the the robot with the. the the Shroud. Uh, I don't know. That, I'm going through the characters in that film. Well, Brian Blessed was in it, and he played the Hawkman guy. Yeah. And there was some great effects in that. I love that movie. Big Dino De Laurentiis, uh, you know, action. And, and who was in it? Uh, the, 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 the woman, uh, what was her name? Melanie. Uh... Yes. Gordon? Was that her name? No. Or no, she... she played Dale Gordon. Yeah, she, Melanie. Uh, she was in uh, Dead and Buried. Oh. Uh... And that was going to be her big film. Flash Gordon was going to be her big, you know, rocket. She looked hot in that, from what I remember. Yeah, she has an interesting little pug, little, little nose, very cute. Well, who was um, the uh, who was Flash? the The guy who was on the New York Jets team, right at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. He didn't. No one uh, cares. <laughs> he didn't go very far. Is it Sam something or other? Yeah, he's <clears throat> but he's a cool guy. He's like, yeah, you bet. He went about as far as Flash Gordon. Yeah, I know. I know. Was, I know. Yeah. What? Was that a big hit? I don't think so. I think it was another one of kind of Dino De Laurentiis' uh, misfires at that point. But I don't know. I don't know. Clash of the Titans with Harry Hamlin. That was another one I saw around this yeah. time. Yeah. Lawrence Olivier. and I mean, that, that was a great film. I remember as a kid, like I was like, oh, wow. A little Ray Harryhausen effects. This yeah. last big film he did, pretty much. I remember going, uh, uh, my dad took me to... Lionel Playworld, which was the big toy store. Oh, man. And I, I went there, and they had the Clash of the Titans action figures, and I bought, like, Perseus and Calibos, the horned villain from the film, and 
the Pegasus horse with the wings. Oh, there was wow. big things around this time. A lot of action figures were released to coincide with the films. Yeah. Like Flash Gordon. Flash, yeah. Uh, I bought a lot of those. And- well, it was started by, uh, you know, of course, Star Wars was the biggie, you know, and then everybody like Dune had all the action figures. Did you see Dune in theaters? No. In fact, it was, I God, it was like not... <laughs> Not when I say not too long ago, I don't mean like five years ago, but yeah. it was more like I mean it was like the mid '90s to late '90s before I even watched Dune. Damn, I lo- I love Dune. I love Which, it. I I saw that I started the first time I saw it was the TV version in the late '80s. You know, the uh, the really long TV version which had all the the you know the storyboards and the, the paintings and crap in it, and I saw that, uh, and then I eventually saw the theatrical version on DVD. When I bought that little that steel case version, wasn't uh, or but no 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 I bought the VHS version, and then I bought the steel case and now the Blu-ray wasn't because of Dune's reception. Wasn't Lynch kind of like tapped to do Return of the Jedi and like because of the the way that Dune performed? I think uh, I think he he lost that to Richard Marquand. I think he I think before no I think that was before Dune. I think before Dune that uh, he had a, a meeting with uh, with George Lucas to do it, just off the strength of uh, Racerhead and Elephant Man. Yeah, because naturally, Return of the Jedi would fit in with those two other films, right? I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I, well, I'm Elephant Man, which is such a big hit, you know, and um, another monster. And, and Eraserhead's just such a you know a technical marvel. It's a good family picture. Yeah, it is. A lot of heart. I think that to kind of bring this full circle. How can you bring it full circle? I don't know. Well, watch. I'll show you. Okay, thank you. We need to have David Lynch bring back Pryor's (laughs) Place. Well, you know, of course, I mean, David Lynch directed Richard Pryor and I guess what was his last role in Lost Highway. Remember that? Where he was wheeling around the wheelchair well, see, there you go. See, see there, see, there, there you go. There you go. It's like unconsciously and it's kind of That's what it. esoteric is all about. I Again, yes, making those kind of subtle unconscious connections like, uh, you know, putting the feelers out into the universe and... Uh, seeing what gets reciprocated back. Yeah, seeing what uh, kind of stuff you get in your fingers. Seeing what kind of sickness returns. Yes, what kind of... Uh, yeah. What, what, so what exactly. happened to Richard Pryor? What happened to Richard yeah. Pryor? Didn't he have some sort of illness? Yeah, he had MS. And it was funny because I was thinking about the quote. I don't know. I saw this on a. a I, was, I was listening to Howard Stern. I don't Stern think he ever covered MS or Jim Pryor's plays. Or, yeah, or Jim Brewer or something. And it was like talking about how it was in a, a card game and uh, how uh, he was, at the end they'd ask him, like, how you doing? And he was, and he'd be, he'd be like looking at everybody. It's like, hey, I'm fucked, you know? <laughs> Because he was about to die. He was like, how you doing? I'm fucked. <laughs> oh, my God. Wonder Wheel. Oh, my God. Did it, was, was a, those were uh, his last words were, oh, oh my God. God, Wonder Wheel. Wonder Wheel. Wonder Wheel. Now, sp- speaking uh, of last words, I wonder, uh, you know, we had the, the unfortunate news earlier today that, oh, now you're bring that a current. Whitney Houston died. Oh, my. We, now we haven't, current. as of the current time, received a... a uh, Diagnosis for her her demise. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, apparently she she was found uh, croaked in a bathtub, like a Jim Morrison type scene. Yeah, there. she was breaking on through to but, the other side. But yeah, I mean, I love the Bodyguard. I think it took a, n- a number of years to do the Bodyguard. You know, it's a Lawrence Kasdan film, right? Uh, Costner. Steve McQueen was originally going to play Costner's role, and Diana Ross was originally going to play. <laughs> Whitney Houston, according yeah. to yeah, I think I yeah, I thank thank you for uh, bringing that tidbit. I think I, I remember that because I think it was a, it been kind of bandied around uh, since the seventies. Yeah, for a long time, long time, and um, and that was nineteen ninety two. And you know, just being honest here, I mean, Whitney Houston really has lost her relevance, really ever since around that time that the Bodyguard was out, except for like that Waiting to Exhale film. Yeah, well, yeah, waiting to exhale was a kind of a phenomenon there, but uh, she did, she's no longer waiting I mean, to exhale. You no, know, <laughs> I mean she was a figurehead. I mean she I, and I love that uh, bodyguard uh, movie, um, and love I love Kevin Costner, and uh, it is very. He's good. McQueen esque sort of performance in that. He's being well, the, okay, the strong silent type. 
you know, okay, you're saying he's ripping off McQueen, he's doing this, he's well, doing I've that. Well, read, I've read stuff about well, Costner talking about how he directly emulated Steve well, McQueen's acting. you know, you got to emulate the best. I'm not saying he hasn't. Uh, I think it's, that's good, you know. But I he, he brings his own. He was great in Testament. You, did, did you see Testament, one of his early roles, where it's like an atomic bomb movie? A what? I, an, an atomic bomb movie. Oh, atomic bomb movie. Not, not an atomic bomb movie. That would be kind of a whole other <laughs> no, thing. Was... No, it's a, a holocaust, an atomic holocaust film. And he plays this. He plays with Rebecca De Mornay. He plays his wife. And I play with Rebecca De Mornay too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and and his and his son dies, and it's like they're burying him in this uh, in this um, shelf, like a cabinet, uh, little um, what a drawer. They have their son in this drawer, and they're like, you know, uh, he, they're running around the streets with him, and uh, it's a very sad film because it's all because it's basically this suburban Southern California neighborhood where everybody's slowly dying from new, uh, radiation so poisoning. It's like on the beach. Uh, oh, it's cool, far better than that. It's a cool movie. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I know as far better as than that. Well, yeah, I guess so. But uh, yeah, so Whitney, great. With the uh, what, what is she the uh, the princess of? Pop or something. I, what, what's her mom? I guess so. I guess she's the figurehead. You know, she did that greatest love of all. Another hit. Who was her kind of godfather? Was it Clive Davis? Yes. Or, yeah. And uh, underneath Dionne Warwick, Cicely Tyson. I mean, all these people she was related to. Yeah. She want. I want to dance with somebody. With somebody, somebody who loves me. And then me. they got the uh, I'm every woman. Ooh. See, the thing I'm really not looking forward to is like having to hear all the. Uh, all of the the replaying of all of these, like I'm Every Woman and all these other songs, and you're gonna hear all these people coming out of the woodwork talking <laughs> about how she was so important to them now when she was largely forgotten as anything but a crackhead for me. Well, years. she well okay, you know she had her 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 problems with the drugs, and uh, you know we come to Barry Caesar not to praise him, and uh, you know we're not gonna go past that, you know, but at the same time, you know, she had ups and downs. I mean, even at the end of the 80s, it was kind of like she slowed down, remember? I think the last hit she was involved and, in was when Bobby Brown smacked her in the side of the head. Was <laughs> okay. All right. Okay there. Okay there, no, Jack I, I Benny. Like She's all right. Yeah. Um, but then she slowed down at the end of the 80s, and then she had the bodyguard, and that hit, you know, went up, and then slowed down. She had Wayne to exhale, and then she did that. Preacher um, wife. What? The preacher wife. The preacher's wife, and then Denzel with, with Denzel. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot Denzel was in that. Denzel Washington. And uh, what was that B Courtney Vance was in that, or C Courtney? What is that? Courtney B Vance. You know that Courtney Cox. That uh, uh, subtle uh, actor there. Um, <laughs> Um, Vance. Yeah, B. Courtney. Well, she was in the the preacher's wife, wasn't he? Courtney Vance. I don't know. Yeah, was Precious in that? I don't know. If Precious in that, but uh, she, she still you know, in Star Spangled Banner, the, the Banner. Banner. Yeah, <laughs> no, you no, have, have been, no, uh, no. It's a Star Spangled you Banner. Had Pryor's place, haven't you? <laughs> if not, it's Star Spangled Banner. Remember that when she was all sweaty and and in the, she was, the wearing that, she, she was belting it out. And they, remember they were. Remember when they released that crap on VHS, like a five-minute VHS? It just starts bangle banner. I remember I saw it at Kmart. I was like, oh, man, I got to buy this, you know? But I didn't buy well, it. The, I, I, bought, I bought I bought The is, Evil Dead instead. Well, the funny thing is I still don't give a shit about that. I just think it's interesting that, you know, I hear the news, and, and I was listening to some old biddies, like, behind me while I was having dinner with my family this evening. and When the news came the, down. Yeah, the, the news was shaking out that, that, oh, my God, Whitney Houston's dead. Yes. So I was listening to these. Uh, it was like when when Kennedy died. You know, you remember where you were? Ooh. Yeah, I was I was eating a chicken chimichanga when the news came down that <laughs> that crackhead Whitney Houston had had waited to exhale and had accomplished her final exhale. Oh my God! Yes. So I wonder what poor Bobby's going to do these days now because he doesn't have know. a punching bag anymore. Uh, you know. Were well, they still married? Literally and figuratively, I guess. Um, no, I don't think they were. No. I think they got a separation, and Bobby Brown is a turbulent lifestyle. It's his prerogative; he can do what he wants to do. Yeah, and uh, you know he had other wives, right? He had other. He had that whole reality show. It wasn't Whitney on the. I thought the Whitney was on the reality yeah, show. She was. Yeah, I don't, I didn't follow it, but uh, remember yeah. the Bobby Brown song? Is it on our own from Ghostbusters Two? Yeah, man, I love that. Well, he's on his own now. Yeah, I thought every little step I take, you will be there. I thought that was from yeah. uh, the. 
Ghostbusters 2 or yeah. it might not have been. No, every little step. They came out around the same time. Bobby Brown only had like what two or three songs. Well, he well, kind of the, rode off of those for like a decade. Oh no, he had you know because he was with, with New the, Edition, right? With New Edition, yeah, and that was she. He had that kind of Mr. Telephone Man. Yeah, something wrong with my life. Yeah, that New I, Edition. Yeah, that was. Um, yeah, that was again. This is you know part of the uh, Saturday morning type of crowd. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Man, New with Edition. Menudo. They got the fades and the. The with the Menudo styles with the face. Oh yeah, Menudo, little Ricky yeah. Martin. Yeah, well, yeah, the, uh, the ever knew, revolving Menudo. You knew that motherfucker was tasting dick <laughs> back then. <laughs> I mean, I was saying that guy was gay since he came on the scene with that. Uh, what is it, living La Vida Choda or something? Or <laughs> what La, are you or talking about, Ricky Martin? I yes, I know you. I know, That's I know a this motherfucker. It's a you knew pretty. That guy was gay. Yeah, he wasn't a stranger to dick. <laughs> And then it comes out later he was molested by their their uh, who is it the manager or something the guy that used to touch like the uh, the other kid bands that I, came out later I don't know I don't know <laughs> come on man he, he, he menudo, I just know about the wholesome menudo who was on Nickelodeon in the eighties and hanging out with New Edition what was hanging new out with Michael Jackson there was New Edition and there was the other one I don't I forget the name New Edition and uh, I don't I've forgotten were these were, were these young black Males, well, like, like well, Edition, hey. or were they Menudo, like Latinos, or something? Yeah, another, yeah, another young black male band. Hey, it, was it black uh, music group? Soul R and B to the beat of the rhythm of the night. That guy? No, Debarge. no, not Debarge. I don't know. I forget. It was like Boys to Men. You know, it was, well, Boys well, to Men was, that was kind of like, like a decade later. Yeah, I know, but Boys to Men it was the evolution, ev- evolution, evolution. Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was well a revelation evolution. Debarge it was place. To, you got that sickness from Briar's place. <laughs> no, I did not. But uh, so, the, so they were the evolution. Menudo is what you were saying? No, I was not. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even like the name Menudo. I think it's sick. What, what does that translate to? Like young gay boys or no, something? No, it's Menudo. Is you know, it's like a, a, a food. It's all together. It's a crap. It's, all, so like, it's awful. He's like dropping a load in a bowl and putting it in the refrigerator. <laughs> what are you talking Menudo about? Does? What do you? I don't know. I just this is it's gone off track. Yeah, I don't know. I remember Menudo. They had a music video on Saturday morning that uh, one time, and they had these Jerry curls, these Latin like Jerry curl sort of things, and they were going up and down an escalator in a mall, and they had like a parrot, and they they had a parrot on their shoulder. And I don't don't ask me what the fuck was going on with this, but it, it was it's pretty funny. Hmm. And then they had the the. Uh, they had these shirts that were like made out of vests via like tearing the sleeves off. Yeah. The, so you know they had to show their, their that they're they're men. You know they got these they got the hard look with the sleeves torn out of their shirt. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember that. Um, I, my mind is 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 uh, fading here. I don't Lisa know. Lisa and Colt Jam. Lisa Lisa. Okay. You don't remember that? Uh, yeah. I I think I do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I, she was on the scene for like about fifteen minutes. Yeah, it was just so uh, we were kind of like organically going from like one topic to another. But yeah, yeah. It was that that mid eighties like music pop music. I remember I remember watching Siskel and Ebert during the uh, in the weekends. That's another big thing I used to watch on Saturday afternoons. Like after the cartoons at it was the Siskel, movies. At the movies, yeah. It was Siskel and Ebert. Would say, oh hey, t- this week we're doing The Fly. This week Vamp. You know, it's like whoa. It's, uh, yeah, Siskel dead with yeah. Lady Houston. And Gallagher I used to watch Gallagher. It was late night, but Gallagher, uh, Gallagher. Oh, yeah, well, it wasn't. It wasn't Saturday, but uh, you know, was, I used to rent the uh, the Gallagher when it was like Lost in the Sixties or something. It was Gall. It, oh the yeah, Gallagher series. I and, love it. Uh, from what I heard, actually Gallagher was playing uh, here in town. I, re- I already yeah. played in town. Yeah, he plays all over the place, and uh, he, he he's played here frequently over the years. You know, Gallagher's brother is another one that that apparently, or for a while, was he was ripping him off. Basically, he was pretending he was Gallagher. So what he instead of smashing watermelons, he smashed like pumpkins or something. No, he did the same thing. No, he just pretended he was Gallagher, and then was going to these old towns and uh, do his thing. It's kind of like. Uh, yeah, you, know, you go to a foreigner show. It's really just Lou Graham, just uh, you know, ho- you know, horsing his way through a song, <laughs> which I, I they went to. Lou like Graham was at Blue. a fair, and it was just you know, 
horsing his way through a song there. Um, He's opening up the fairs these days. Luke well, King. this was about say, five years ago, but anyway. So, uh, but I hope he gets better. You know, he's, he's had a lot of uh, problems throughout the years. So I hope that uh, it comes together. Peace and love. 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 Don't send me any more <laughs> items. I will not be signing anything <laughs> after August the 28th. Peace and yes. love. This I, is coming you know, from peace and love. I, it's coming from peace and love to me too. It's good. So what have we learned in, in this session of Esoterica? What have we learned? We've, We've learned, learned that... About Friar's Place? It doesn't pay to be a member of Menudo. It does not. It does not because you... You get the sickness. <laughs> you'll, yeah, you'll get some uh, problems with your uh, intestinal tract there. And, uh, the hiv could be around the corner. The, yes, the sickness could be just around the bend. We've, we've learned that <laughs> we've they learned. sell good shit at Friar's Place. <laughs> yes. We, yes, we've you can all... score some good shit at Friar's Place. Yes. And... If you have MS, you're basically fucked. <laughs> and yes, so we've learned that John is going to have a lot of fun editing this show and cutting <laughs> it up. Well, wait, and, you got to cut anything up. Making it's, it's been great. It's, it's, yes. It, it, well, no, I'm not going to edit, edit a bit of it. It's all great. We we don't we, we're hardcore here. We're, yes, we're we are hardcore. Hard we we're, roll we're hard. Yeah. We walk hard in this. Dewey, yeah, there's Dewey no, Cox there's, would there's say. no like childish dick jokes with our podcast, unlike no. some others. No, some other podcast that say might emanate from the Eastern Kentucky area. Yes, yes. You know, we roll hard here. We, yeah, but we don't roll like we come from Pryor's Place. We represent Pryor's Place, damn it. And, and Wonder Wheel rolling from. And Wonder Wheel. I always wanted a Wonder Wheel as a kid. I would look at in, in, in catalogs, and I was like, "My God, I gotta get a Wonder Wheel." Well, I thought I'd be, be able to purchase a uh, African American, like the kid in the movie with well, Richard Pryor. Yes, wow. Well, because I mean, that's what they implied. I mean, it seemed like it was fun, you know, when you're a kid. You know, I mean, there was nothing, you know, racially motivated. It wasn't. I mean, it was and, just a matter. And, of, and there were all these kind you know, of hey, this guy's, you know, hey, it's Richard Pryor. I mean, you know, this yeah. must be fun, you know, having a, a you know middle aged black man like to basically host your days activities and go out and what were they driving golf carts and it was a great film it was a dick donner film yeah they were driving golf carts and it was like a fun film because i was i was, I was stressing earlier. it was like felt it felt like you were like hanging out with richard Pryor, you know and it was there was all these double entendres and all these little sexual innuendos and the idea is called masturbates and you know and all this crap but it wasn't his name uh what was his name? Something Brown? Yes. Jack Brown? Something like that. I don't, I forget. But, you know, that becomes kind of serious because then, you know, the, yeah, you gotta the, the kid. To, you got to learn the life lesson. Yeah, the kid, you know, like starts to get him into publishing this paper about all the bad things that the Jackie Gleason's doing, his father. And, you know, then you got Ned Beatty in it. And, and, uh. This was after Ned Beatty was like getting ass fucked by the hillbillies. It was, it was, yeah, it was after he squealed like a pig. And, you know, it was, and it was kind of like a, um, you know, a good social message. And a good film where, like, the kid is informed by Richard Pryor, and Richard Fire kind of grows and 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 gets becomes a better person because of the kid. So, and he get he becomes yeah, a little typical bullshit story, and he becomes a little less colorblind. But it's a good, you know, um, and, optimistic story. If, if Whitney Houston could have done a song in this, I I know Whitney. Yeah, Whitney Houston probably should have watched that a few more times. Maybe she would have. Uh, yeah, she would you have know, learned don't do drugs, kids. Yes, a little. Well, she should have you know, watched JoJo Dance. Your life is calling. That's a, that's probably the movie she should have watched because you know, well, she never lit herself on fire, but you know, same thing. She, but she she knew how to fire a bowl up, probably. I don't know. I don't know about that. She can get handy with a Coke can I'd, or, a, or a light bulb. She can I, fix one of those those homemade... Allegedly. Uh, I don't know. Well, allegedly? What do you mean? Alleg allegedly. I, I don't we, know. We know that she's not a stranger to... I don't, I, don't, I don't know that. I'm not aware of this. Well... You know, Legal disclaimer. Well, she's a public uh, person. I, she's I, not beyond... I know... Uh, She's well, a public name. She's not beyond mockery or satire, which is what we're demonstrating. Well, I, I understand this. At the same time, I I, I've never personally. seen her. I've never seen her do any drugs. Just like I uh, seen her. like Paul Rodriguez is like I'm not. I didn't see Mayor Barry doing drugs. I saw him in the same room as cocaine with Gary Busey. <laughs> I saw them, and I can say I can saw them. In, I saw them in the same room. I can say I can saw them. 
I could see. I could say. I could say. Mama see, mama saw, mama. He said I saw them. Michael Jackson. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm out of it. Yeah, you've you've been at Briar's place too long. I can't end the show. Well, we didn't. Yeah. I can't we, end it. We need to. The show can't end. No, the show can't end. I don't know. We need to end the show. I want to stay here forever. Because we, we need to get on over to Pryor's place. I don't know. I can't kids, end it. You need to hurry. Don't be late at Pryor's place.